Hey guys, welcome back I, to I, our I real love, love scenario. <laughs> real love scenario. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Next time we're gonna be box that joint. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna give you a different like genre of music. Let's just try to make them different. Real love, hip hop, R and B, a little classical one. You gonna do the. Okay, that's next time. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. It's a beautiful morning. Amen, amen. Even though it's not morning, it's a beautiful evening. Amen, amen. I'm happy to be here. Me too, my, um, my man. Me here with too. our real lovers, here with Rhonda, here with the cameras and the lights. We're here. We're here. And I'm here with you. You are. All right. You know what I'm hoping for? What are you hoping for? That the DMV actually decides... You know what? I'm going to turn the weather and I'm going to keep it there. Okay. <laughs> that's fair. That's, that's fair. all I ask. It's fair. I don't think that's too crazy. Because before I went to Belize with my wife, which was great for our anniversary, mm -hmm. there was like days it was like 85, mm -hmm. 88. And then I come back, it's like 61, mm -hmm. 55. And it's like, what are you doing, bro? Mm. Why? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why are you doing this to us? Why? We didn't do anything to deserve it. We Make would just up like your mind. And I think we sometimes forget that like March you can't fully use because it's still winter. But I just feel like it's been really cold, although it's spring. Right. Like it's been really cold. Don't don't get me with the conspiracy theories because I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but the weather is a spooky one. It is. It's 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 a lot different. It's different than what it used to be. Absolutely, absolutely. But then Tihu, it's coming, Dre. It we is. probably got two more weeks of wonky weather, and I think we'll be in the clear. I hope so. Yeah, because summer will be here next month, so it's coming. The whenever, Lord is whenever I hear you know Will Smith, summer, summer, summer time. That's how I know. I haven't heard that yet. Here it is. If we have you heard it? Transform. I just haven't a little heard it. break from the norm. No, that's how I know that it's actually summer though. When you hear that song, yeah, for sure, for that's sure. That's how so you know it's like it's time. We got time. We got a little time. Keep your jackets on for now. For those yes. of you in the DMV. Also, I wanted to mention this because this is somebody who inspired me a lot. Um, the reason why I started playing the piano was mm -hmm. because of him and somebody who I feel is extremely talented. Prayers up for Jamie Foxx because mm -hmm. we don't know what's you know going on with everything with him, but mm -hmm. he's definitely an icon, one yeah. of the most talented people out just ever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. prayers up to him and his family because you know I don't know what's going on, but I hope I just that I just it it every time I get on the internet and I see his face, I get scared. Right, like every time I'm like. Oh, God, I love Jamie Foxx. I have followed his career, I mean, as long as I could have. For I sure. mean, but I watched the Jamie Foxx show. I loved him as I love him as a singer. I love him as an actor, comedian. as a comedian. Like, he is all of the things. And I feel like the thing that I love about him the most is the storytelling. Mm -hmm. Like, anytime I've ever seen him interviewed... He tells the best stories. Because he'll do the impressions too. Yes. Like, it's so <laughs> good. Like, Lord, I'm definitely praying for him and praying for his family. And also to you weird ass people who think you deserve all of this information about what's going on with someone's medical life or medical issue. You guys are weird. Like, we know that something is wrong. That's more than enough. Yeah. You don't need to know what happened, why it happened. You don't need to know that. Just know that something is wrong. And if you believe in something bigger than you, just pray for his healing. That's it. Yeah, the thing that I don't understand about, especially the Jamie Foxx thing and wanting to know more information is like, they do, like this. My team, the Golden State Warriors, they dealt with this because Andrew Wiggins, who's a very important player, he missed most of the season due to family reasons. And people are like, "What's the reason? Why? Like, why? Why? Why?" And to that extent, I'm like, "It's your person. It's his personal life." Yeah. Obviously, if his employer is okay with being like, "It's okay for you to take a break," mm -hmm. that's okay. But even mm -hmm. in the sports thing, I get there's fans and stuff like that. Yeah. But with the Jamie Foxx thing, I'm like, it's not like like. On a normal basis, you wouldn't be checking in on me to make sure I'm good. Right. And figuring out what's wrong or how my day is going. But now when I'm all of a sudden going through something, now you feel like you deserve information. And it's, it's just like crazy. What, like, why? What makes you feel like you're, and that's why I get why some celebrities, 
have the certain the, the mentality that they have or operate the way they operate mm-hmm. because it's like people feel entitled to them for some reason. Yeah, and absolutely. I, get I, I get it. I, I do to some degree get it, but I think there just needs to be a, a boundary. Uh, so sure. we will set that boundary. We have been praying for him and sending him healing energy to him and the people that love him the most, his sure. actual family and his actual friends. Exactly. As fans, we certainly love him, but I don't, I don't know him, you know, yeah. so I just want him to get better. So fingers crossed he gets better really, really soon. For sure. We need you back in the entertainment world. We do. <laughs> need you to be good. Yes. Um, I'm super excited about our episode today. Should same. be a lot of fun. Same, same, same. Are we jumping straight into our real love life scenario? Yes. Or do we have a review? I'm trying to figure out. There's so many different reviews. Let me see. I got While go Dre looks for that. Um, one that I haven't. I received a, a, um, a voice memo while, while you do that. And I just want to shout her out. Um, Shantae, she said that she is so thankful for the podcast. Well, that's because... a review right there. Go ahead. <laughs> um, she's so thankful for the podcast because it gives healthy, differing perspectives on the topics that no matter what the perspective is, you can glean healthy advice, even when you and I don't necessarily agree that your perspective is a healthy approach. My perspective is a healthy approach. And just in general, she walks away feeling that episode over episode that it is just like, it's like good, sensible, healthy advice. And she's like, I just, I just like that, that it's not, you know, dicey or you just trying to give nasty advice just to be entertaining. So yeah. um, I really appreciate you for saying that. For sure. What's her name? Shantae. Shantae, thank you so much. Yes. We appreciate you. And that's the cool thing about, like I said, our real lovers are dope. Like, mm-hmm. our real lovers are dope. Like, because that's the one thing I love about our, our crew and the people who listen to this show yeah. is that they don't, the episodes don't dip based off a topic. No mm-hmm. matter what we're talking about, like people are still tuned in, still engaged and mm-hmm. still listening to the show. So mm-hmm. it's like really cool that, cause you know, some shows like depending on what they're talking about, ah, that don't apply to me. Yeah. But the fact that people are still tuning in, mm-hmm. even though it's different topics or talking about different things, uh, it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, Shantae. I appreciate you sending me that message. Thank you so and much. And for you listening and watching. Um, all right. So let's jump into our real love life scenario. Let's do it. Um, it is the viral clip heard around the world this 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 past week or so. Um, the Ebony K. Williams bus driver gate is yes. I would like to call it. Um, Ebony K. Williams, who is a, a you know journalist and lawyer and all these things, she has a show on Grio, and she had Iyanla Van Zant as her guest. And um, she essentially was talking about masculine and feminine energy and what we can do to be, you know, kind of on the same field, if you will, of working on that as women. And throughout the conversation, I would say, because I watched the whole thing, that it was a it was a great conversation. But at a point in response to a question that Ebony asked, Iyanla asked Ebony, would she date a bus driver? And her response was, if he owned the bus. Mm. If he owned it to what to which Iyanla rebuttaled and said that's problematic because the measurements or the standards that in her perspective that women use to measure if someone's a suitable partner are not rooted in character. They're not rooted in like who the person is or the type of person they are. We first measure them by um, their jobs or the income that they earn. And so. Ebony got a lot of backlash and she has subsequently gone on additional interviews and had a podcast episode on her own podcast. Um, And so just wanted to get your take on it. You've seen the clip. You've seen the responses. And as a black man (laughs) in America, just curious on what you think about it. Oh, man, 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 man. I mean, this is the thing that most guys are trying to tell you about. Or most guys are talking about when it comes to I, a lot of women, I guess, of this age or generation. It mm-hmm. seems that there's this unattainable level that they need to somehow reach mm-hmm. um, that they don't feel like 
is obtainable or is realistic, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes even the people and her situation is a little different because obviously she's a well-known person and she has a platform. I'm sure Mm -hmm. that she has, you know, successful from a monetary standpoint. Uh, But there are a lot of people who uh, would they would what's the term punching outside their weight class in a Mm -hmm. sense to Mm -hmm. where they want these things, but they don't even bring these things to the table Uh, with the comment. So this, this is a few things when it comes to this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like there's a show with Skip and Shannon, and he every time he's about to say a point, he's like, <sighs> "You gotta take a breath." Yeah, you gotta take a okay. breath. Okay. So let's break this all the way down. Women, I, I will say, and I will admit this: it's harder out here for women when it comes to dating. Okay. Let's excuse. Let's let's assume that we're talking about heterosexual relation relationships, mm-hmm. and we're assuming most women don't want to date. Let's say below their station or take care of a man to a certain extent. And How by below their station, you mean money, mon- well, or mon- yeah. monetary earning. Well, yeah, but a, a lot of women don't want to feel like they're taking care of a man. Okay. Let's say that's fair. Heterosexual relationships, a woman don't want to feel like they're taking care of a man. Um, when you look at how we measure success or like you look at a successful woman, a woman who's doing very well, Mm -hmm. it's very difficult. And dating is a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Let's go to, let's say college, right? That's normally for most people outside of the entrepreneurs or the people who, you know, have success early on without going to school. They were born into wealth, born into wealth. Yeah. Most people that we deem as successful go to college Mm -hmm. and get a college degree in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Go to college or get a college degree. Mm -hmm. Um, Even in that, if we're using that as a measuring stick for the first step of success, Mm -hmm. women are already outnumbering men Mm -hmm. in that. Mm-hmm. At first in the 90s, it was a 50-50 thing. And even before that, it was probably more 60-40 men, 70-30 mm-hmm. men. Mm-hmm. But now in this day and age, it's 60-40 leaning to women. Mm-hmm. So if we're saying the first step in being successful for the average person is getting a college degree, then women are leading in that space. Okay. So that already puts you kind of at a disadvantage as a woman if you're talking about successful man versus successful women. Mm -hmm. Possibly, you know, if we're Mm -hmm. just looking at it from these blatant terms. Yeah. Now let's take, let's say that smaller pool and let's now break down the successful men. Mm -hmm. You have men who are married. That's part of that pool of successful men. All right. Correct. Um, you have men who have just a lot of women who aren't looking to settle down. They're just having right. fun. They don't desire they it. They don't desire it. Mm-hmm. Boom. So that's another group of the successful men, what we mm-hmm. deem successful. Yep. Then you have the men that what women would be, would perceive as either corny, not, not having swag, not, ha- not being attractive, mm-hmm. you know, that type of group of men as well in in the successful group Mm -hmm. so then already in the deficit that lies of the balance now you have an even smaller group Mm -hmm. of men that are available to you to actually date if you're looking for that type of man right Uh um and then that's before you even put any other stipulations no kids hasn't been divorced sure believes in god like sure all these different things like Mm -hmm. there's all these a certain height that's before all you put all those stipulations sure on it so mm-hmm. i'm just setting the stage just to say i do think it's difficult mm-hmm. for women when they say like dating is hard it's hard to find a good man mm-hmm. especially if you are a very successful woman or you're doing well for yourself yeah so i will establish that and say that that is true mm-hmm. now how that relates to this situation is that if you find a man mm-hmm. who what success actually means to some people is measured on a monetary value. Yeah. But I think that you have to value um, happiness, mm-hmm. quality of life, mm-hmm. um, the ability to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. That All those things have to be considered. Yeah. And I, I rather be with somebody who says, this is my career. I love my career. Mm-hmm. I'm happy in my career. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah. And this gives me a great quality of life that I'm satisfied with. Mm -hmm. And then if they have the character to go with that, to treat me like I should be treated, I am happy with that person. Mm -hmm. 
because as the successful person or as somebody who is a whole individual, I don't need you to take care of me. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to take care of me. I'm not relying on you to buy things for me or do if you do that that's out of love or out of my love language or because you appreciate me or because you care for me you're Mm -hmm. trying to show affection that's why you're doing it you're not doing it out of necessity you're doing it because you want to do it Mm -hmm. I don't need that type of person to you know do that yeah for me so I think in those situations that should be the person that you value and I think that a lot of times it's flipped with men and women like a man If he dated, let's say the equivalent to a bus driver is a teacher, Mm -hmm. nobody would look at the man crazy or it wouldn't even be a thing. Or people honestly maybe look at him sideways. You wouldn't date a teacher? Like, why not? Mm -hmm. Like, what if she loves her job? Mm -hmm. What if she enjoys what she's doing? But as soon as you flip it Mm -hmm. and you ask a woman who may be a VP somewhere or a woman who's very successful and they're like, oh, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm dating a teacher. They're like, teacher? Like, how much you make? Yeah. I only make like 50, 55,000. Like what y'all, what y'all doing with that? Like it's, it's looked <laughs> down upon for yes. some reason. So I don't even blame all sometimes even the women in those situations, it's the environment, like the, yeah, it's the, just the societal, societal pressures. pressures make you feel like that's mm-hmm. not adequate, that you need sure. something more. You mm-hmm. need a man who's doing more, but I, I like in the clip, um, what's her name? I always say it Iyanla. wrong. I- Iyanla. Yeah. Uh, said it's more about the character of the man. The the women that I see, um, even like some of Bree's friends, like some of them just dated, and I don't want to say regular guys, but like just good good guys. Mm-hmm. Like, and those are the ones that are the most happy. Mm-hmm. They really solid dudes, really good guys, really down to earth guys who take care of them. They don't have a flashy job. They have good jobs, mm-hmm. but not like millionaires or anything like that. Yeah. They're good dudes mm-hmm. with good good jobs. They take care. They treat their women right. Great character, high character guys, and they're happy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what is the goal here? Like, what are we trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be in a happy, healthy relationship? Or do you want to have some type of facade of, you know, keeping up this or keeping up with the Joneses or looking like your relationship or life is a certain way? Yeah. And it's like what we talked about before is that people have these fantasies of what they want their relationships to be without sacrifice or Mm -hmm. risk or anything. So you want it all. You want a man that's going to be super rich, do this, do that, look this way, Mm -hmm. has this type of clout, treat you amazing, great character. And not saying that you can't find that in somebody, but if you're just pushing out every other man, Mm -hmm. hoping that you can get this man who's desired by everyone. Right. Like you're, you're missing out opportunities on the men that you actually could have who would be treating you great. And then I'll end with this is that, even in this situation, like when I first met Bree, I was not where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. Like now to any woman, I feel like I would be an attractive if I was single an mm-hmm. attractive, you know, prospect, like mm-hmm. young, you know, attractive black guy, mm-hmm. no kids, mm-hmm. executive at a huge media company, mm-hmm. you know, doing well for myself. That's an attractive person to be. But when I met Bree, I wasn't this mm-hmm. like, you know, I was assistant property manager. Yeah. And making what I was making and I was and she didn't look at me and say like, oh, because he's not this, Mm -hmm. then we can't have a conversation like, oh, you're assistant property manager. I feel like that's the thing. Would you date a assistant property manager at a building? No. If he owned a building. Mm -hmm. Dang. (laughs) But look at me now. Yeah. Like you weren't trying to build with me. Mm -hmm. You weren't trying to you ain't trying to shoot in the gym with me. You know what I'm saying? Like you could build with me to get to a certain point. Mm -hmm. But you're just worried about where I'm at currently. Like I that's one thing that we had talked about before this and I'll hand it to you is Mm -hmm. that take your time. You can't just take a snapshot in time and say this is where this person will always be and who they are. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about how I told you my boss said that he you know, started as an intern at the company and met all these different people. And now 15 years later, they're executive vice president here, Mm -hmm. VP over here, president over here, because where you meet people at Mm -hmm. doesn't always mean that's where they're going to be. And I know she talks about ambition and that a whole other rant that she went on. That is just a lot of other stuff. Yeah. But just the initial thing is that like judge people off of their character, Mm -hmm. who they are. Yeah. You know, how they treat you. Sure. Because that's the things that's going to last the test of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? People are unhappy with people with money. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? People aren't happy with people who got power and clout. Mm -hmm. No, people enjoy spending the time with the people who treat them well. People want to be places where they are wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a relationship with somebody who feels that way, then I feel like you'll be even more happy. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Um, I said to you before we uh, started recording that I am slightly embarrassed at how much how much of this story I have followed um, <laughs> to some degree. It was because it was sent to me and it just started conversations. I'm obviously a black single woman. Um, and so it was interesting to me. I am a fan of both um Iyanla Van Zant and of Ebony K. Williams for different, very reasons. different reasons. Um, I want to be somewhat sensitive to compartmentalize certain parts of my feelings around it. Yeah. First and foremost, as a black single woman that is 39 and um, that's never been married and doesn't have any children, um, I, from a personal perspective, understand the role or what part I've played in not being married today and the part that I didn't play in that. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I was just having this conversation with my friend, Justin, um, which shout out to Justin. We've spent a lot of time talking about this situation. Um, I am not of the group of women, and I don't say this to shame this group of women, if any of you are listeners. I am not of the group of women that prioritized my education or career over finding a partner for my life. It just is what happened. I worked and I've been working since I was 14 years old. I continue to keep employment for the most part. Um because I have lived on my own. At a point, I moved out of my mom's house. I got my own apartment. And so I just continued to grow in my career and my life. All the while, I have been in some relationships that just didn't work out. Ultimately, we were not compatible. But I also found myself in relationships for an extended period of time that I knew weren't right for me. I was in situationships where in those times when I knew from like day three, I shouldn't be doing this. I extended it and dragged it out to 365 days or I wasted, quote unquote, two or three years of my life dating someone that wasn't serious about about marriage. You know, so those are the things that I did to contribute to um, not finding, quote unquote, a partner. But at a point in my life, I became quite serious about that that decision. And that probably came in my late 20s. And I was in a relationship for years that I thought was going to lead to marriage. It didn't. Um, I took some time off from dating and then mm -hmm. I got back into another relationship for five years that I thought would lead to marriage and it didn't. Again, never at any point was it because I was fist to the air. I need to be able to, I'm I'm a career woman to hell with these men. It, that was never the case for me. And again, any woman who feels that way, I get it. I do, especially as a black woman who grew up in a certain environment where you have had to take care of yourself. Having a job that pays a certain amount of money in order for you to take care of yourself is just the cost of being an adult, right? Anything above and beyond that is just a personal achievement. So I can understand why so many black women have this visceral response to Iyanla making it seem like they must date, they must lower their standard. Mm -hmm. But I just don't necessarily agree that that is what Iyanla is saying. No. I think that with her res her reasoning for asking Ebony the question that came after Ebony's question of what can women do? Understanding the statistics, right? The statistics are saying that, and let me be super clear about what the statistics says. The average black man still earns more than the average black woman. Not by much. Both of the averages are around $40,000 for black women and black men in our age group, 30 to 30, 30 to 40. What the statistics that's, that's getting skewed is that black women are exponentially growing faster than black men are in these separate categories. Mm -hmm. So at a point, if the pace continues the way that it's going at some point, the average black woman will then out earn the average black man. That's what I was talking about. The balance, the balance. But as of today, black men still out earn black women again, not by much, but they do. So I think we need to get that super clear. So when you say out earn, are we talking about on an average, their salaries are more. So I'm saying average on salaries are more, but you're saying that there are like the when when it comes to the the average, is it more 
just in when we talk about a certain like economical standard, this is the salaries or is it more like I'm just wondering if the number is, I guess, equal if we're talking about the whole like if we're taking the number of black men average Mm -hmm. and the number of women Mm -hmm. that there are the equal amount of. I mean, this is from census and social social security statistics. So how many people were polled? It's based on census results. So I'm sure the numbers aren't exactly perfect because if there's more black women that are just alive, then, of course, the numbers are slightly skewed to the black man count. Right. So I don't know the. Because I think that that could speak to the pool being smaller or larger if sure. it's more women than men. Although men in this space are averaging around mm-hmm. the same amount that there's if there's more women than men, then that can feel like an yeah. imbalance. And that and that statistic doesn't represent any specificity, right? Yeah. It doesn't say how many of those are married. I didn't drill that far down mm-hmm. into it, but I just wanted to clarify that because I think it's getting confused with what we hear in the stats about black women graduating more from college. That's true in comparison to black men. That's true. There are more women who are represent, um, you know, certain job pools. All that's very true. Again, we are growing faster than the overall pool of black men. So again, that's true. I get really sensitive about saying dating is hard, although I do know that to some degree it actually is because I'm single and I'm dating, right? Mm -hmm. But I do think we have to be careful to compare um, people who are of the 1% to the rest of us, okay? The rest of us are not a part of the 1%. The 1% represent earners that I believe 500,000 and up, okay? Majority of us are not that, no. right? And so while I understand your point that you would be, a, if you were single, you would be a great candidate for lots of women. The truth is somebody doesn't want you. Yeah, Somebody true. in this world would not date you, mm-hmm. even being handsome, being an executive, had, being an entrepreneur. Somebody would be like, you not my speed. This mm-hmm. is, you, I don't like something about you. You know for what I'm sure. saying? So it's somebody for everybody in theory. Yeah. Ebony gets to have her preference, right? If her preference is rooted initially at income earning, it's, it's, her, it's her preference. All I will say is your preference determines your pool. So if your preference is a high earning man at the uh, th- before we even get into his personality, if he loved God, his mama, blah, 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 blah. If you say he got to make a certain amount of money, then you know that with the pool that you're working with, which is one percent. If you then add all the things that you just said, you add that he loved his mama. Well, some of them one percent don't love a mama. OK, mm-hmm. some of them one percent don't want relationships. Cool. So you're just knocking your 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 pool down more and more and more. She may very well be of that understanding. She's a very smart woman and I think she gets it. My biggest issue with Ebony in this whole situation is tone and reverse engineering. The tone in which she said, if he owns it, it was very elitist. Elias. Yes. It was not that you have the preference. It is how you communicated the preference. It was also that you didn't say dot, dot, dot. If he That's owns the bus, because I am an entrepreneur, which she later expounded on in a separate interview. So I'll give her credit for that. She said that it is because she's an entrepreneur and for compatibility reasons, she would like to date someone who is already an entrepreneur because they understand the, the, hustle, bustle, tax, uh, liability, the blah, 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 blah of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Cool. You're saying it's a compatibility thing. I'm still good with her. Right. When she reverse engineered that joint and started to make it about white supremacy, black excellence in this country, the, the low vibrations of, I was like, Okay, hold on. Hold up. Yeah, you're going way too deep with now this. Now we going into a whole nother set of conversation, sure. which this 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 now your reverse engineering is a valid conversation. It just is not an appropriate to rebuttal to what just happened with who you would and would not date. That is the part that turned me off the most. And listen, I'm still a fan of hers. I, I just think she had a, a rough moment with this. Yeah. And instead of simply saying, I make a certain amount of money myself. I manage a certain amount of businesses myself and I want to date a man who at my age or older is already into the swing of some of these things himself. Just leave it there. It's I don't nobody would have been like she crazy. Like most of us want that. I mean, and then the people who feel the way are just going to feel the way about it anyway. Because they don't qualify. But I 
um, what I what I think that I, I always call her Ayana. <laughs> Iyanla. Iyanla. Yeah. Iyanla. And so many people mess her name up. Right. I, she I, probably for... know auntie. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the point that she was making, which I think all of us can take the lesson from, is just consideration. Yeah. Not even saying you have to do something, but just consider an alternative. Like, don't just completely That's it. discount something else because you feel like it may not be what you want, especially mm-hmm. if you never have experienced it. Just consider. Yeah. Like, just, I don't know, maybe it's possible. Like, and that I feel like that's a lot of us. And I know for you and me, we, we are very much in that space. Like, even... And I know from even the previous people that you dated that you're very open Mm -hmm. to receiving love and however that may be and who it may be. Yeah. Um, And I feel like that's the mindset that you may have. It's like, oh, would you date somebody like this? It's like. Possibly. I don't it's know. Maybe. maybe. But like, there are some people that if you ask me, I don't know what they are right now. But no, I do know. Like if you earn your income illegally, I would not date you. Yeah. Now, you could very well have aspirations to stop doing that. Yes. Right. Sure. Like you could be aspiring to become a business owner and all these other things. But if today that's what you, you earn income through illegal means, I cannot date you right now. Now, I could potentially date you again. It's not number based. It's mindset based. Right. Like I just can't because that's risky. That's scary for me. I don't want to date someone who could be in trouble with the law or in trouble in another way because you do things illegal. Yeah. So I would I would have a hard answer to that. In her case, it just happened to be a bus driver or a blue collar worker, blah, blah, blah. And so I can compartmentalize. Ebony gets to have her preference and her preference will determine her pool. Her preference will determine how many people are available to her to date? Mm-hmm. Thankfully, in her, in her case, she's open to dating outside of her race, so she might have a more suitors than yeah. than a woman who feels like that, but is African American only wants African American yeah, man. Yeah. So she gets to have that. I just did not like the reverse engineering, and I did not like the tone in which it was said. And she went on to say she not trying to coddle feelings. She understands that she hurt people's feelings, but sometimes you have to hear the hard truth and da 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 yeah 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 two different conversations though yeah I, 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 the thing i didn't like about it was to equate somebody being a bus driver as having a lack of ambition like that's the thing so it's like you can clear it up and say oh i want to date an entrepreneur all that okay that's fine yeah but that's what you missed it that wasn't the issue that people had mm-hmm. the issue is that like you said with the tone it mm-hmm. was all almost as demeaning Yes, it was your, the tone was demeaning. Demeaning that career path. Mm-hmm. Like being a bus driver is a career. Mm-hmm. It comes with benefits. It actually can be very well paying. Mm-hmm. Just the same as being a teacher mm-hmm. or if a man was a nurse mm-hmm. or if it not that they own the hospital mm-hmm. or own the school mm-hmm. or own this. It's mm-hmm. like these are actual career paths that people have. Yeah. And these are uh, a lot of career paths are what people feel like they get some type of purpose. Some people like interacting with people. So driving a bus every day, just seeing the people, maybe they do it, a school bus and Mm -hmm. the kids, Mm -hmm. like they love the kids and they do, maybe they love what they do. Mm -hmm. And there, that doesn't mean you have a lack of ambition. Right. That doesn't mean that you, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. And entrepreneurship is, is a lot to manage. And it also does not dictate how much money you have. They're entrepreneurs that make $30,000 a year. Yes. But, and (laughs) also with that, because I've been an entrepreneur full time for seven years, you can be just as complacent in entrepreneurship as you are at a job. Yeah. There's always another level that you can get to no matter what level you are at. So therefore, Mm -hmm. if I'm more comfortable being a VP mm-hmm. and I'm content with that. So that makes me better than a person that's comfortable being a bus driver. I don't have any ambition to do anything more than that. Yeah. I'm okay with being a VP or I'm okay yeah. with being a director. I don't want to mm-hmm. do anything more than that. So now I lack ambition, but because my title says this, then it's fine for me to be complacent in that title. Yeah. But because it's a different, if, if mm-hmm. it's a lower title in mm-hmm. your mind, mm-hmm. then I can't be complacent with that title. I got to do something. And that's all 
influencing from societal standards because sure. honestly what does it really mean mm-hmm. like if i was a lower level manager but made just as much as a director over here just because i'm a lower level manager in this company and i have this title and this is the perception of me mm-hmm. you're not going to date me and feel like i need to strive to be more like i said if i want to be a teacher and don't want to be a principal am mm-hmm. i not ambitious sure am i not you know somebody who's grinding is society telling mm-hmm. me as a black man mm-hmm. that I'm not pushing to be enough sure. in, in life. Like, and no, listen, I, all things, I enjoy, what my, I enjoy what I'm doing. And I, I think that people are sorry. No, you're good. I just think that this is a lesson into why you shouldn't do things for other people. If you are happy and doing mm-hmm. way, doing things and happy where you are and happy with your life, you will find somebody who can fit into that life with you. Absolutely. You don't have to go outside of yourself to do something just because mm-hmm. somebody else said, Oh, I want you to do this. or I'll be more attracted to you if you did this. Cause then yeah. you'll always be chasing that. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, if you happy teaching a class and, or driving that bus, like do it. Yeah. Be absolutely. Happy with it and and, and date somebody. someone who is okay with you doing that. Exactly. That's we all get to have our requirements and, and we're, and I'm going to move on from it because I could go on and on about this subject, but, sure. um, we all get to have minimum baseline requirements, sure. things that we want, things that we don't want, and they are rooted in whatever they are rooted in. I think the reality is Ebony is a high earner herself, and therefore she would like a high earner. Doesn't necessarily mean that he has to own anything. I just think that sounded cute in the moment mm-hmm. when she said it. it was like but realistically, just like, like you that. said, if he was the uh, vice president of the bus company, he doesn't own it. He still is an employee. He still just works there. Yeah. Right. He, but he earns likely a much higher income than the driver because vice presidents of sizable organizations tend to earn more money. Yes. I understand why she might want a man who, who earns closer to what she earns or earns more closely to what she earns because financial mismatch in relationships can be very hard to manage, sure. especially when it's the opposite way, especially mm-hmm. when the woman is earning more than the man. So again, her preference around that is not problematic. It is her thing. Even if it is a problem, it's her problem to handle. It was the baiting and, and switching to some degree. It was the ver- reverse engineering and making it about, um, black people's class status in the country, which newsflash, classism, capitalism, those are actual results of white supremacy. Just if we being all the way clear and we do to some degree subscribe to them. All of us do. Everybody in this country subscribes to them, no matter your color. So I just hated that she missed the opportunity to just say, it's, it's just as simple as I don't want to adjust my lifestyle backward to date someone that earns less than me. And even if that's not the most woman fuzzy thing for, for somebody to hear it's her preference. That's it. But to turn this into an issue of race and social, it just became like, what? Like, huh? Even when you watched it, you were like, huh? It was like, how did we get from here to here? It was a very clever lawyer style way. Of, of managing a response. It gave me lawyer 101. Yeah. This is what lawyers do very well. This is why they're likely paid so much, which even that is cheeky because some lawyers don't make shit. Some lawyers are not paid very well. Yeah. Some of them would be considered the same income of a bus driver. Okay. Sure. So I just did not like that. And I just didn't like the tone that came with it. The what felt like condescending, demeaning behavior. And I would challenge anyone who doesn't agree with me, because I want to be clear, y'all, I'm not going to tussle with you about this. Watch the energy in which these things were said from the original comment to the reply video to the subsequent interviews. It came with an energy that came across as classist and elitist. And I didn't like that at all. Even though I have my own particulars, I'm not going to date a man that only makes $10,000 a year if he doesn't want to grow from that, okay? If he just wants to stay there, that would be hard. I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say that like, if he like makes- that's beneath me. No, it's just, that's just my preference. It's not beneath me. It's just what I would prefer, right? So it was, for me, it was all tone, energy, and attitude. And it was disappointing to see her be so snarky mm-hmm. about it. That 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 was my biggest, my biggest issue with her. So, um, Yes. Moving 
right along <laughs> to our real love scenario this week. Uh, a little bit of a long one, um, but I think a really good one, though. Okay. Um, she wants to be anonymous and she says, hi, I love your show. Thank you for sharing such a healthy perspective on relationships. I've been listening after a breakup and I wish that I would have listened earlier. I was with a man who I truly love and who, looking back, I know loves me. I know he dealt with a lot of anxiety and that's something he's spoken to me about. He was impeccable with his word. He was always there for me and he truly made me happy. We spoke every day and most times when I would tell him I didn't like something, he worked on it. I think that I struggled with trusting that he was a good man because frankly, I had never met one before. We had an argument about something small one day and it became much bigger. He told me he couldn't keep trying to be good for me because it seemed I was never happy. Looking back, I do think I was unfair and at the time he was also dealing with work and illness and a death in his family. He completely shut off for me for a week and I went into disarray and I blew up on him because I felt triggered. We haven't spoken in a month at this point. He actually just completely ghosted me after knowing each other for two years and dating for one. I put it in quotes because that was actually one of the bigger issues in our relationship. I am married. I got married at 19 and haven't been with my husband for years. We haven't even lived in the same state for several years. I applied for divorce almost a year ago, but he won't give me a title of girlfriend until my divorce is complete. We were in a relationship to some degree, talked every day for hours, went on vacations together, slept together each week and were exclusive, but the lack of the title made me feel insecure. I think a lot of my insecurities stem from that, feeling like perhaps he was using it as an excuse. So the slow tax and the going out to clubs were a bigger issue than they might've been otherwise. I also had never met anyone in his life. I felt like maybe he didn't take me seriously, but he insisted that the chances never came up for me to meet other people. And also some of it, some of it was due to his social anxiety. I really did love so much about him and he was always ready and willing to listen to me, to make changes and to acknowledge my feelings. But those big things made the small things big for me. I think I played too many games trying to get him to prove himself to me. I also struggled with drinking and the person I became when I drank. I recently quit alcohol and started to, and started going to therapy and the time apart has made me realize what I need to work on and I want to do it with him. Ultimately though, I think I just I think just flat out ignoring me is a sign that he is done with me. I want to reach out and I want to try again, but I also worry that it's too late and I should leave it alone. Should I fight for this man that I love? Should I forgive or should I accept this as my loss and just take the lessons to be better in my next relationship? Thank you so much for writing in. Um, we really appreciate it. And before we break it down, I just want to at minimum acknowledge the vast amount of vulnerability and accountability yeah, that sure. you displayed in this message um, because being this accountable to where you messed up is hard is 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 very 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 hard um so i'm glad that you got to a place of almost full reckoning and understanding where you made a lot of mistakes in this situation so dre where would you like to start no uh, this is there's so many things in here that we could talk about mm -hmm. um i guess we could talk about why people push people away yeah it's so interesting because um, there are a multitude of reasons and we will never be able to cover all of them. But I think in her design or her dynamic, I think it came for two reasons. One, because as she admitted and said, she had never really dated someone that was this good to her. Yeah. So because she never experienced it, she struggled with even believing if it was real. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's so unfortunate. I'm sure there's so much psychology around why that happens. But I, no matter how many bad people I come across through the dating process or how many um, bad situations have happened, like my relationships didn't work out, I never inherently disbelieve people when they're showing me good behavior. Mm. I never just inherently think, mm. this ain't, Something's up. 
I never inherently think that I have to continue to experience things or get signs that they are not being all the way honest. But just because they're different from the priors never makes me think you must be like the prior. In fact, I am very refreshed when you aren't like that because yeah. that's actually what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So I've, I don't, I don't uh, resonate with it. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't project when I meet new people, everybody gets a new slate, a clean slate. Now I do use reasonable deduction and emotional intelligence to be like, that look crazy. But the thing that looks crazy is crazy. It's not actually like a good thing that I'm warping into something crazy. It's never that. It's yeah. usually a sign of that. So I think that's reason one. And then reason two is because sometimes you just don't want to be there. So you self-sabotage. You start doing things to get the person to leave you instead of you leaving them. So I think those are, I don't, I don't think the second one is what she's doing, but I think those are a couple reasons as to why people push people away. Cause you really want them to go, but you're too cowardly to do it yourself. And then the other reason is just because you're not used to it. So you subconsciously self-sabotage, you look for reasons to, for them to be a problem, even when they're not being a problem. Yeah, yeah. no, I completely agree. I think, I think about it on a, like more of a macro level mm -hmm. of like the two reasons that you basically said, but I, I look at it more, you know, I always take it outside of like a relationship yeah, and yeah. try to Let's go to life. Give me a metaphor. Um, and I just think of like, instead of why do we push people away is basically why do we decide not to do something, which is mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. the same thing. And I mm -hmm. think about, all right, the two, there's really two reasons why we decide not to do something. Either mm -hmm. that thing that we're supposed to do, we don't want to do it for whatever reason. It doesn't align with what we want or how we want to do something or how we want to act when we go there or anything like that. Or there's something within ourselves yeah. that is like, I don't, like it's a me thing of mm -hmm. why I don't want to do that or pursue that or mm -hmm. go after that. So I think about even if it's something like your friends ask you to go out, why would you not do that? It's either one reason, either you don't like where they're going. Mm -hmm. You don't like clubs. You don't want to be yelling. You don't want, they maybe smoke cigarettes there. You don't want the smell in your hair. You don't want, yeah. you know, the people that they're going with, you don't want to go. So it has nothing to do with you. It's just that place, that, that entity, that thing you don't want to anything to do with it. It's yeah. external mm -hmm. or you have the internal. Maybe I got a pimple on my face. I don't feel good about myself. Can't afford like, it. I can't afford it financially mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now I, to be able to have fun. How I wouldn't have, be able to have fun. So that like, those are the two reasons, either it's internal, external. And then we all know when it comes to then when presented with, do I do this or not? We come up with a plethora of things or why we can't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you'll tell your friends all type of crazy lies. Like, ah, yeah, I'll try to make it like, maybe <laughs> I, I, I'll see what I could do. Right. Uh, what time? <sighs> like, <laughs> Dang, dang like, I gotta take was, my mom to the grocery store. Yeah, like, dang, you know, you my know what? stomach's I think I got hurting. COVID. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's all these excuses of why mm -hmm. you're saying I can't do this. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's the same, like you said, we're pushing people away. It's either a thing to where you don't feel you're adequate or prepared, or mm -hmm. you don't feel comfortable for whatever reason to pursue that. But then also, it could be the other person. Sure. But the ways you go about that are very much the same. A lot of them aren't necessarily attacking them truthfully and saying mm -hmm. this is what it is you're doing some type of other gymnastics to try to get out of the situation yeah. to circumvent like actually dealing with it and there being actual feelings that are addressed and maybe you being the cause of disappointment mm -hmm. um so i agree with you that you know self-sabotaging is a real thing yeah. like people do that and a mm -hmm. lot of times i mean there's so many different reasons if you look through like a list of like why people self-sabotage, but mm -hmm. one thing that you said, like the, like almost like an insecurity in yourself, like feeling you're not worthy mm -hmm. or deserving or something um, is a big reason why that, like sometimes yeah. that is a thing that people do is like, sometimes people feel like things are going too well. Yeah. And it's like, you're trying to almost brace yourself for mm -hmm. the fall. But then if you do that, you can end up, 
messing up the situation just because you're bracing the whole time versus embracing yeah. what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can disrupt things as well. I've been in relationships like that. I've seen relationships like that to where you're so worried about what could happen that you're not enjoying what is happening what is happening yeah. right now like you're so concerned and wrapped up in mm-hmm. all these different things that you're not even present because mm-hmm. you're just trying to figure out what the heck is going mm-hmm. on or when it's going to happen or i know it's going to mess up at some point i know this yeah. person's going to disappoint me at some point like it's going to happen mm-hmm. and it's just a thing to where it, it ends up not being great for the relationship yeah and being fully accountable to even that before you know we move into the next part of this is Sometimes we are we are staying in situations that are harmful to us much too long, much too long. And this is why that then warps you into thinking that bad things are always going to happen. In fact, that's a part of life, right? Like life is filled with unfortunates, things that don't always go the way that you would like for them to go, Mm -hmm. even down to like, you know, you driving here. Some days you drive to Baltimore just fine. Other days, it's a bunch of traffic. Yep. You didn't do anything wrong, though. You didn't cause the traffic. You didn't cause the accident. It just was an unfortunate thing that you couldn't control. So I think it's the same thing when you're dating people. You may not have caused the person who you're dating to mistreat you or not handle you right. Mm -hmm. But once you realize that that is what's happening to save yourself so that you don't continue staying in that cycle. So sometimes to avoid traffic before you even get on the road, you look and see if there is traffic Mm -hmm. so that you take a different route. You find a different detour. In this situation, you can't. Right. We all know about the bridge. child. Ain't no no other way around it. Unfortunately, One way. but in relationships, we do have choices. And the faster you move away from things that are harmful to you, the better you protect your heart and your mind and your soul as you navigate through life, as yeah. you navigate into new relationships. Staying in something too long, yes, can ultimately shape and negatively shape your perspective on other people because everybody isn't the mistake of the last man they're not he you happen to encounter what sounds like a really really good guy and so much of what you had going on just shaped how you treated him and likely because you stayed in certain situations much too long yeah much much too long the thing that i uh, i mean there's a lot to break down this situation yeah and i think number one the thing that stood out to me is that Women have to understand if you're with a man who loves you, Mm -hmm. when you're not satisfied, he's going to be uneasy. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just the reality. Like, Mm -hmm. if you aren't happy or there's something off about you or you don't seem satisfied or you don't seem like you're happy, Mm -hmm. that's going to affect him. For somebody who really loves you and cares about you, it's hard for them to keep going, especially if they're living with you. When you're you're off, like Mm -hmm. the energy's off. Like, Mm -hmm. really, when they say that a woman makes a house a home, like that is legit like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wherever my wife is i told her we're looking for possibly getting a house or moving Mm -hmm. somewhere different and i'm like regardless where we move i know you're gonna make it what it need to be in order for it to feel like home right you know what i'm saying but if my wife is uneasy or not feeling good or telling me that she's unsatisfied with something that bothers me and i feel like i need to find a solution like what do we need to do to Mm -hmm. get you in a better place or to get us in a better place um and I think that that's a big reason, not why relationships end or lead to divorce or anything, but I don't think sometimes women may understand like how much I'll say complaining or expressing things like constantly mm-hmm. could get at a guy. And then especially if a guy feels like he continues to make adjustments to try to make you happy, mm-hmm. continues to try to make adjust. I need this. I need this. Okay. We'll figure out a way to get you this. Okay. We got you this. Okay. I need this. Okay. We'll figure out a way to get you this. I got you this, but you don't ever seem satisfied. Mm-hmm. Like that would drive, that drives men crazy. I know that drives people crazy just in general, but yeah. I know as a man, it will drive you crazy that like everything I'm doing, mm-hmm. I adjust, I try, I give you the things you say you need. We bought this house cause you said you want it. We did this cause you said you want it. Mm-hmm. But then you keep telling me that everything I'm doing is not enough. Yeah. At a certain point, somebody gonna be like, well, I'm, I don't I'm have just, it. I don't got no more to give. Like, yeah. cause it, it, cause it doesn't seem like no matter what I do, I'm satisfying you or yeah. that you're happy. Mm-hmm. And then you can be like, no, I'm so happy. Like you're, you're great. But it's like in the day to day conversation, 
you're not giving me that. Like mm-hmm. everything I'm doing, you're you're upset mm-hmm. and angry and feel like I'm not doing enough. So then it starts to become, is the juice worth the squeeze? Mm-hmm. Like, is everything I'm doing to try to get this juice out of this orange or lemon? Is it worth like all, all this, this effort muscle. that is taking to <laughs> yeah. get this? And then when I drink it and it feel and it tastes bitter and it's like, this is not even that great for all that I'm, all the effort that I'm putting in. It's not worth it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stop squeezing. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's something that you need to take in consideration. Cause you could, that could be the thing that's, driving that drives him away Mm -hmm. in that sense is if you're constantly telling him he's not enough yeah and i and i don't think people understand how much that affects people and their mindset and even if it's true how we always talk about communication you got to figure out how to package things Mm -hmm. like the thought that i'm just keeping it real i'm just telling you how it is Mm -hmm. and thinking that that's the effective strategy to be in a relationship and communicate with somebody especially when there are emotions tied in that's not a great strategy. It's not. Like, you got to learn how to package things sure, to people sure. to where you don't, they don't feel attacked. Because, like I said, I always say that communication about it being effective. Mm-hmm. There is certain communication that, although it could be true, will shut somebody down. Yeah. And have the opposite effect mm-hmm. than what you actually want because of how you communicate it. Even in the top of this episode, where you're talking about Ebony how you communicate there was multiple ways you could have said what you said but the tone the way you made somebody feel attacked and feel like Mm -hmm. oh you coming at me Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. you could have said that completely different and it wouldn't have fallen that way and it wouldn't have felt it wouldn't have felt that way so yeah i would say in this situation as you're learning and as you're you've been very transparent in what you're doing like learn how to package certain things Mm -hmm. um learn how to express certain things that you need Mm -hmm. give people patience and time if somebody says all right baby i hear you Mm -hmm. don't bring it up again tomorrow (laughs) because it may take some time in order for for, not even Mm -hmm. for register but to execute oh yeah yeah, you know what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. like for me if you're telling me you want something like, all right, it may take some time to lay it out and do this. But one thing that Bree said this on the For the Girls episode is like she got to a point to where she had to trust me. Mm-hmm. And then when she let go of what she thought she should do and she trusted me and it turned out better, she was like, I had to always keep in mind that when I tell my husband I need something, he hears me. Mm-hmm. And he's just thinking, what's the best way? For us to get that, but still it makes sense in our situation. Mm -hmm. Like, I hear you. If I love you and I care about you and you tell me you want something, something that's not like crazy, you know, Mm -hmm. unattainable. If you tell me you want something, I'm that's registering to me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to figure out a way to make that happen. I'm not completely ignoring you. You just have to be patient with me. But don't bug me every day or tell me that I'm not doing enough because after a while I'm just going to be like, all right, whatever. Like. It's, it all comes back to communication, like you said, because I think there are some upsides, so much upside to what you said. And and sometimes hearing your partner is simply acknowledging that you heard them. Like yeah. if I say I want something and not even just tangible things, like I just might yeah. want to date more often or I just may want to have more intimacy. It goes a long way to say, like, I appreciate you sharing that with me and I hear you and I and I and I promise that I'm going to work on it. And, you know, we can check back in in a couple of weeks to talk about it again or we can check back in. You know, it's OK to create measurables within your relationship. So many people get on this uh, soapbox about marriage is a business, marriage is a business, marriage is. A business. So then so then to some degree, you do actually have to take some things from the business world and bring them into your relationship because they are effective not to create your relation or make your relationship starch like a boardroom, but goal setting it in in business is a crucial part of it, right? Goal setting within your relationship should also be a crucial part of it, especially when you are introducing things or wants or desires that weren't already a part of it. So if it is, you know, babe, I really want to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is conversation. That is goal setting. When? How do? How will we do that? When should? Do we have enough housing to accommodate a baby? You then build out a plan and you back into the plan. It's okay to apply those types of things to relationships because honestly, it's probably why a lot of this stuff doesn't work out is because you're not doing that. It's because you're just trying to do it like magic or like 
just just floating in the wind like no you need to have conversation around desires and changes and allow reasonable time yes to meet the goals that you are setting forth and to that point to that point one thing she said in here that i'm like don't do this Mm -hmm. is don't be t- don't test your partner in relationships like it's like some type of quiz or pop quiz that mm-hmm. they have to answer mm-hmm. when you're in relationships like that it will always leave you disappointed angry and upset i feel like most of the time like if you want to have sex with your partner have sex with your partner mm-hmm. don't be like i'm waiting to see is- like if they gonna come at me Mm-hmm. Or if I'm going like I'm, I'm just waiting to see, and then they fail the test that they didn't even know that they was being tested for. Mm-hmm. Like, and they like you didn't even let them know or make them aware that this was even a problem or this yeah. is even a thing. Mm-hmm. But you're testing them, yeah. so they don't know you're just testing them. So then you're giving them the side eye, and they're like, "What's wrong?" Because at the and point, it's like, are you, are you upset? And it's like, well, I came home the other day and I feel I look good. You didn't even like kiss me or te-. and it's like. Oh, you wanted to have sex? Yeah, I wanted to have sex. Why didn't you just say? Why yeah. didn't you initiate or something like like? Don't test me mm-hmm. in a relation. Don't c- continue to test me and test me and test me because then I'm on this like thing to where you're just looking at me the whole time. Like, what are you gonna do? You judging me? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. It's like communicate, as you said. It's all you rooted in just saying it. Yeah. Just say it yeah. or talk to me about it. Or if there's something I need to improve on, let me know that. Let Give me, know. me adequate time That's to what I was improve. About to say. Yeah. But don't just be like I'm testing you in my mind or I didn't do that mm-hmm. because I just wanted to see what you were going to do in the stuff moment like that, that like, you think you have to do a test that is when you know it's time to communicate Yeah, because I understand the feeling of every time we go to have sex I am initiating it nobody yes. I don't think most people want to feel like they're the only person pursuing sure. sexual no, intimacy really. but at the point that you recognize I'm going to see if he going to try is the very moment where you need to say hey babe exactly um you know (laughs) every time that you know lately we've been intimate i am initiating and i want to feel desired i want i want for you to come on to me sometimes i like that feeling i like feeling like when i go out and i get dressed up i enjoy that you notice it i enjoy when you tell me i look nice i enjoy that Tell them what the value is in what you're asking for. Tell them what they will get from what you're requesting. I would appreciate that 10 times more than failing the test. I failed the test on Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You mad at me and I have no idea why. Yes. Because you were testing me on Tuesday yes. and I failed mm-hmm. it and then I didn't know. And then you just walk around. I mean, pick it up yourself. I ain't getting mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Hey, baby, can you hang me out of the fridge? what you it's yours right get up and get it like i I ain't your mate and it's like i'm sitting here wondering like okay (laughs) you had a bad day today (laughs) is everything okay it was a normal day i don't know what happened but Mm -hmm. i failed the test two days ago i didn't know it and it's like don't test me just tell me like Mm -hmm. if you feel some type of way or you want me to do something like do it yeah. or, or say, you know, communicate to to yeah. me. Like don't leave the trash by the door and wait to see if I'm going to walk out with it or not. Mm-hmm. If you see me walking out and don't get it. Hey, babe, mm-hmm. don't forget to to grab the, the trash coming out the door. Don't leave it there yeah. as you see me walking out just to see like, mm-hmm. see, I told her every time he don't do it. He don't never do it. That's why I need a man who actually going. It's like, mm-hmm. tell me mm-hmm. because yeah. the things that people don't understand is that most of the time. The things that you are communicating in your relationship are the things that your partner struggles with. Mm -hmm. And it takes time for them to reverse courses of action because these things can be embedded in them since they were like kids. Yeah. So you have to understand that you have to give them time. You have to be diligent in how you communicate and smart in how you communicate. But you have to give them time as well and give them grace to understand that they're trying to be better at something or do better at yeah. something. And don't just treat them as they're just like these awful people who are purposely mm-hmm. trying to do this to you mm-hmm. or make you feel this way. If somebody loves you, they're, they their life would be 10 times easier if you were always happy. <laughs> like that, yeah. that's what I think people For don't sure. understand. For sure. If somebody loves you, their life would be 10 times easier if you were happy. Mm-hmm. So most of the time if they're doing stuff to make you unhappy, they are not trying to do that. Probably purposely. not. Yeah. Probably, probably not. You know not. what I'm saying? They are no. probably not to do cuz it would be a lot more peaceful, a lot more easy if you were just happy and satisfied. Mm-hmm. So the things that they're doing, I'm sure if they could snap their fingers, 
they would be like, huh, mm-hmm. I wish I could not do that. Or I wish I could do that thing that you want to do. And it came natural to me, but it's something they have to work on and you have to acknowledge it mainly because there are things on the flip side that they feel that same way about you, mm-hmm. that there are things that you don't do like that the they butter. wish that you did. <laughs> We're not going back there. We're not going back to the butter. And just really quick to go back to the butter, as I said in that same episode about um, when you're trying to help your partner learn something so they don't do it to make you unhappy is when they do it, when they start catching the swing of it, when it becomes a routine, if it's a routine thing, or when you set a goal and say, Hey, I want us to blah, blah, blah. And you get that. Be appreciative. Yeah. Voice your appreciation, show your appreciation. Like, don't just say it, show it depending on like what it is. It's like, Oh my gosh, babe. I noticed that for the last, Three weeks, I haven't said, have, haven't had to say anything to you about taking the trash out. I so appreciate that. Stop always thinking that just because they should do it, that they don't deserve gratitude for doing it. It's a lot of things that people should That's do. The worst thing. They still deserve to be told, thank you. You know, when people give me back my change, when I pay for something in a store, when they hand it back to me, I say, thank, thank you. you. They are supposed to give me back that change. Like it's mine. But I still say thank you just because I appreciate the exchange. I appreciate that you put it in my hand and not on the the table. Mm -hmm. So just because things are supposed to happen does not mean that people don't deserve to be um, appreciated for them. So just say thank you and show that you appreciate them. For sure. So I wanted to talk about um, the part of the story where at least when I read it, I was like, oh, wow. When she got to I was married or I am married. And that for the two years that you've known each other, you've only been dating for one of them and you just filed for divorce less than a year ago. Do you think that people should date while they are going through a divorce or legal separation? In her case, she said they haven't lived to get in the same state for years and they haven't been together for many years. So she's not living with or actively married, but she is still legally married. So do you think you should date while you're legally married? I don't know. Okay. It's not for me because this is the thing for me is that I don't, I don't like to say something is right or wrong when I feel like if I was in that situation, I possibly could do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I even thought, I think about that when it comes to like abortion or something, it's like, I'm not to say how it's right or wrong for somebody because if I was in a situation with somebody that I ain't want to have a baby with, that's it, probably it wrong. might be right. You know what I'm saying? But that if might... I was with somebody that I did want to have a baby with, it's going to feel wrong. So I'm not going <laughs> to sit there and say because I could possibly do it if it was with somebody yeah. I didn't want to have a baby with. Mm-hmm. So I feel like even in a situation, I've never been in a situation where I've been married to somebody, mm-hmm. been over the situation, want to move on, and it's taken a while in order to make that happen. I don't know. Like it's possible in that situation. Yeah. I would want to date other mm-hmm. people yeah. because maybe mm-hmm. I've been over the marriage for two years already, three mm-hmm. years prior to separation. And it's mm-hmm. just been like going through the motions. Yeah. So like at this point it's like, yeah, I'm ready to like just go out and date and meet yeah. new people mm-hmm. and pursue things. If I see somebody or meet somebody I'm interested in. So to say it's wrong, like I can't necessarily say right or wrong um i will also say from a legal standpoint uh you have separation agreements and i know that that's a thing and i looked it up that you know when you're going through a divorce some states require you to be separated for a year Mm -hmm. and before you know having the divorce and um you have separation agreements because a lot of what can come from divorce settlements infidelity could play a part in what you get and what you don't get Mm -hmm. alimony and all those different things like that. So people put separation agreements in place so there can be a clear understanding that per this date after that date, I, we were free to do whatever we wanted and that doesn't affect our Mm -hmm. marriage and what was happening before we legally separated. Yeah. So legally there's something in place to allow you to do that, to be protected as you're going through divorce. And like I said, from a personal standpoint, maybe, but personally I haven't seen it be super successful. Mm -hmm. Um, mainly because somebody's just getting out of something and it's too fresh fresh. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times if you're the person that's getting out of something the person that you're actually dating 
is somebody who's looking for something. So sometimes a class could just like, I don't want to just hop out of something and get right back into something. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Mm-hmm. So it typically, you know, doesn't work out from what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am. Um, I agree with you. You know, I feel like it just depends on the status of the divorce. Yeah. I think that if it is in active progress and you're newly like freshly separated, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, only because I feel like it's just a confusing time. No different than when you go through a breakup. It is a confusing time emotionally. You could be sure about the fact that you don't want to be together anymore, but you could be confused about why that happened. You could be confused about why you still love them, but you don't actually want to be with them anymore. Mm-hmm you know, throwing kids into the mix, your children could be taking it really hard. And this may be a time where you really need to support them and be there for them instead of focusing on potentially meeting new partners. Um, It can just be a busy time. And too soon after a fresh split or fresh separation, um, I just wouldn't encourage it. But I think if it's been a significant amount of time and you all are still married for either the laziness of not getting a divorce, just not getting a divorce, which in legal benefits of it or the legal benefits of remaining married. I think in those dynamics, possibly, I think dating doesn't seem as crazy except for once it gets to the very place that they got to in this scenario, which is this man who, again, how you described him, sis sounds amazing. Yes. He sounds awesome. Yes. Even with the little things that turn to big things like you not meeting people in his life and him not giving you an official title as his girlfriend. I completely understand why he's not comfortable calling somebody else's wife his girlfriend. uh, That's a correlation there. It's It's a correlation. And then when, like you said, with that meeting his family, I don't want to explain that to people. Like, yeah. I don't want to, this is my girlfriend. Oh, I, and you start to learn more. She's still married. Like, I don't want to do all that. Like, and then if she said that she'd been a, split from her husband for how long? For several years. She didn't Se- specify, several. but years. That's more than, that sounds more like more than, than one. Than one, more two, than two. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like, like several so what, years. What, what took so long t- for the, for you to yeah. get the divorce? And why is it taking so long? Like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know all the process and everything, but like, it's very few divorces that have to take that amount of time that yeah. have to take years to separate from them. They are usually because there is an extreme amount of assets, assets. Yep. and a lack of prenuptial agreement. So there becomes this whole legal battle mm-hmm. or their children custody parts of the marriage, depending on the state yeah. that hold up that process. But for the average Joe and Jane getting divorced does not take that long. Okay. So if you still married because Oh, no. Okay. The one other thing is sometimes if you are married to um, a person that's incarcerated, like, and then you decide to divorce and they're incarcerated, that can sometimes be challenging too, because they may not have certain access to legal help or um, they may not, you know, this country, they're not really seen as people Mm -hmm. to some degree while they're there. So there are nuances. But for the most part, if you still marry, baby, it's because y'all lazy or there's a benefit. So you did yourself a disservice by remaining married all this time and then meeting a man who sounds like marriage material, who because he is marriage material probably was already like, about dating you with your marital status in the first place. It sounds like he was a friend to you for a year before you all started dating. And even in that first year of knowing him, you didn't file for divorce. You didn't file for divorce until after you started dating because you said you dated for a year. You filed for divorce a little less than a year ago. So you didn't really get motivated to divorce your husband until you met a new man. Yeah. If that's not the case, that's all I can glean from what you wrote in. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, if you don't really want to be with your ex-husband or your, I'm sorry, your husband, you should have already been having that process in motion before you met a new man. Yeah. So he doesn't want to feel like he's motivating you divorcing him because now your leaving of him is contingent upon the new guy. So what happens if something happens in this relationship? Maybe he has a fear that you're really not over it. Like, yes, you don't live in the same state as him. No, you don't talk to him. So then why the hell are you still married to him? 
Are you just waiting to potentially go back? Because it happens all the time. People get separated and get back together. Mm. People separate for years and get back together. Okay. So I get his potential apprehension. I would say maybe he should have communicated it. Maybe he should not have moved into this role of boyfriend behavior because he sounds like he was given big boyfriend behavior. Maybe you shouldn't have given off so much boyfriend behavior if her being married halts you there. Maybe you should have been like, listen, hey, you being married, like I love you and I like you and I want this with you, but you got to get divorced. You really have to get divorced. It doesn't sound like he did that. It sounds like he basically snapped because she was just too complainy, too unhappy, too dissatisfied. And he's like, you are dissatisfied and you are always complaining and you the one that's married. Yeah. I think that that's the biggest thing. It's it, like I said, it takes me back to when I, I talked about this, that Bree told me I was the first man that she ever been with that where she felt happy to be with me. Mm-hmm. And it's understanding like, Yo, you got a little less runway than like you don't got a lot of runway with this or what they, what they say you skating on thin ice mm-hmm. like all those different sayings mm-hmm. it's like you're not in the best position to be saying this or that and not saying that I don't treat you as a partner or treat you fairly yeah. or anything like that but for you to be acting like this mm-hmm. and you still in a situation like. Like I said, the juice then does not become worth the squeeze. Like all yeah. this effort I'm putting in, it's not worth it mm-hmm. to where somebody may feel like in another situation, all this effort is worth it. Yeah. And it is, you know, beneficial for me. But I think that when you couple, like you said, the, the dissatis- her being dissatisfied, the complaining and all that. And like you said, then you p- pile on top that like you still another man's wife. Yeah. Honestly, at this point, like, and then not only that is that I don't, I don't, I don't like to call people something because that's not your character character uh, to say that that's a character trait of yours. Mm -hmm. Um, And also I'm not a judge. I don't have a having a hell to put anybody in or a jail to put anybody in, Mm -hmm. but I would say an action is something. So I would say in this is that, I feel like she had she had a selfish action Mm -hmm. when somebody's dealing with loss and going through something, Mm -hmm. especially if that's your person. Mm -hmm. You got to put some of that stuff on the back burner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to like address it at a different time because not only are they emotional, like they they are in a place to where they might not be operating at their best um, emotionally and mentally. Mm -hmm. So for you to blow up on them. When he's dealing with a illness, a illness, difficult times at work and a family death. Like that's definitely going to have somebody be like, hey, yo, this is a time where <laughs> you're supposed to show up for me. Mm-hmm. Not the time where I'm supposed to feel like I also have to deal with this burden of the person that I'm with. This is the time where I'm supposed to be like, dang, this is the moment where it's dope to have somebody here who's here to comfort me, take care of me, make sure I'm mm-hmm, good. Mm-hmm. And it's like. I think you dropped the ball on that one. Sure. Like blowing up on him when yeah. he's dealing with that. And she acknowledges that she did that. So I just <laughs> think it just became too much, right? Like yeah. you were, you know, you had a drinking problem and congratulations on like working on that and, and disconnecting the unhealthy relationship you have to it. Um, but yeah, it just, it feels like you had someone that even, even if his reservations around introducing you to people and, or officially calling you his girlfriend were his two reservations in this particular dynamic that you describe, I don't think they were unreasonable. I really, really don't. And I don't necessarily agree with you about the whole, um, I don't want to have to explain to people that my girlfriend is married, right? It, you don't like unless somebody is literally asking you if I introduce my boyfriend, nobody says to me, is he married? They assume that he's not because I'm calling him my boyfriend. Right. They they do. But I don't want to have to explain that. I think that only comes up when you encounter like a parent that's like, well, when are you going to get married? Then that might get weird. Like, well, I can't marry her right now because she's married to somebody else. But that person's I think that's pers- a reality. No, like, it, when it, you when you meet people especially if you bring around family or friends 
Mm-hmm. And that shows to them that there's a certain level of intentionality behind this mm-hmm. person. So then you have girlfriends who probably first person, first time they meet somebody that they bring around, and they see y'all being buddy, buddy, like, oh, girl, you think this is somebody that you could be with? Or yeah. this one? And I feel like somebody like that, it's like, number one, because of that status, I don't want to bring you around people because I don't even know what the heck this might even be. You're not mm-hmm. even divorced from your dude. Mm-hmm. But then also it's like, I don't want to lie to my people. I want to be happy. I want to like be free and transparent with my friends about what this could be or what it is. Yeah. And I don't feel comfortable like having you around to even have to possibly fill one of those questions and lie to them or mm-hmm. like be deceiving or anything like that. Like I, I so I do feel like although yeah, it I, doesn't make sense, it's the reality that yeah. could because if that's the case, because we had a scenario like this a while yeah, ago. Because like if that's the case, then you shouldn't be with me, right? If it's that much of a hang up for you, again, don't. You could be kicking it with me. You could be what well, we said. You know, we having a good time. We just having a good time. Don't be the boyfriend vibes at home, and just don't, because it's not a good situation. You, I think, sincerely, and again, he has every right to feel apprehensive. You think that's the case? Because I feel like people do, do that. Do I think, and, what's the case? What's the question? Um, That you shouldn't date somebody if you don't feel comfortable with, with, especially in this situation, because you don't feel comfortable with her marital status until she gets all that figured out before you start bringing her around family and friends. No, I just don't think, again, based on what she said, they were seriously dating, like staying together all the time, like doing relationship type stuff, like all of that. It feels like they are in a relationship. So once you put a sign, a title to a relationship through action or words, then certain expectations come from that. I'm not saying that he shouldn't have dated her. I'm clearly he already dated her. So it makes no never mind. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel obligated because we talked about this two episodes ago about what people think about your relationship is none of your business or theirs. Really, I don't really care if people have an issue with it. When when I am ready to marry her, if I ever get there, obviously she would need to be divorced. But if it's cool for me, you most certainly can't have an a, a issue with it when you're not in my relationship. So I wouldn't feel like pressured to lie or be deceitful if it came up to my friends because if I'm doing it, I'm cool with it, right? So. Again, I've never also even been in that situation where if I introduce my person, nobody's asking about their relationship status. They assume that they're single because they're with me because I'm like, this is my man. When I was with Usa, nobody said, well, oh, he's a nice guy. Is he married? Nobody asked me that. That mm-hmm. would just be like strange. They they might ask me after being around him a lot. What are you guys going to do? Like, are you guys thinking about marriage? And the answer to that question, even if he was married, is yes, we are thinking about marriage. Not, well, we are, but the problem is he got a wife. Like, no, like who would do all of that? Like, I think that's just a dramatic thought, but I do understand his internal feeling. I, I think it's just an internal It's his internal feeling. feeling. It just doesn't sit right with It you. doesn't sit right, and it shouldn't and sit right with him. want to bring other people or introduce other people. To and, disliking to, this person now. Yeah, yeah to, to, to that situation, unless yeah. you... And one thing I learned too, and not saying that, like, I feel like sometimes parents, it's just different, right? Like, yeah. parents is a different thing. But one time, sometimes I, I learn, and I'm learning in adulthood, that a lot of grown people don't have a lot of friends. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. a lot of adults don't have, like, a lot of people oh, yeah. who are close to them. Like, mm-hmm. they may have work colleagues or, like, stuff yeah. like that. But a lot of people don't have, like, friends, like, really close friends mm-hmm. that they, you know, hang out with all the time or yeah. talk to all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, So that's the thing, too, that possibly is, like, I just don't have people to introduce you to. I just to. don't have people yeah, to really, like, I just, like, My coworkers, that's not a thing. Maybe my parents, but we're not there yet. Yeah. And after a year of dating, you just may not be there yet, even if she was single. You just may not be ready yeah. to introduce a person to your partner until you're really sure about... I mean, you're a person to your parent until you're really sure about it. So I don't necessarily have an issue with like him having apprehensions. I think they were rooted in the right place, for sure. I just think... With the drinking problem, with the you, him seeming to not really be able to get a lot right, with him not introducing you to whomever his people are, it was just like, and then you not being there for him when he was having a really tough time, or not not being there for him, but you weren't sensitive to that when you got upset about something. I do think you have done a lot, and I don't know to your actual question, if you can 
get him back, if you should keep fighting for him. I will say that it's been a month. It's been 30 days, which isn't a lot of time to really know if he's truly done because he might not. He just need a month off of you. But I think if you have not apologized to this man, sincerely apologized to how you behaved, you at, at the minimum owe him that with no expectation of anything in return. You you owe him an apology because he sounds like a really good person that was trying very hard and was doing a very good job at it. He loved you. He was patient. He was um, flexible. He was open to your changes. He was all the things. Yeah. So at the minimum, you owe him a sincere apology again if you haven't given it to him because he could now take what you did and how you acted up in that relationship into a a new situation and mistreat women. It's no excuse, but he could because he could feel like, damn, like it ain't worth the squeeze. Yeah, I I agree with you that I don't know. I think apologizing is always the first step. Mm -hmm. Um, Sincere, if you got to write a letter, write a letter. If it's Um, an email. He may receive it, he may not, but that's your own closure that you need to have. Sure. Um, and I think that to me, where I think it's going to be tough and it's going to take some time is that when you're in a relationship with somebody, you want to feel like they have your back mm-hmm. and at your most vulnerable moments, they're there for you. Mm-hmm. And I think that moment where he was dealing through a lot and you kind of kicked him when he was down almost in a sense. Mm-hmm. That is hard to it's hard like to come back from. Come back from. Mm-hmm. You know, I can. We could have a crazy drunk night, and that's one thing. And we could recover from that. We could even have an argument and shouting match, and we come back from that. But when I'm really hurting and I needed somebody, and needed the person that I'm with to be there for me, and I feel mm-hmm. like you weren't. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, that's hard. It's to, very hard. That's hard to get back from. So it I is. don't know. It, that would have to take time. Mm-hmm in order for him to feel okay with that and be be okay with that. But I, I think that you should start to gain closure within yourself. Like I said, whether that is writing a letter, writing mm-hmm. an email, get it all out, say how you feel, but move forward as if this, because it's not currently, mm-hmm. will not be a thing. And this is just, it's a lesson. Mm-hmm. Um, I always say preparation is still progress. So it's prepping you to be the person that you ultimately need to be. Cause yeah. obviously entering into this relationship, you weren't fully healed from the traumatic things that you dealt with in the past. For so sure. you're still prepping to be the woman that you ultimately want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, preparation is still progress. Don't get discouraged, but use this to learn from this yeah. in order to be better for the next situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, we can't, it's no, <laughs> We can't guarantee that even after you do all of that, that he would even consider, you know, rekindling with you. And I don't think that you should sit around hopeful for that. I think that you should acknowledge, like you said, and reckon with the fact that you made several missteps and you pushed away a person that seemingly was really there for you, even with the things that you didn't like. I think they were able to be worked on. Um, Listening to you talk just now, I was getting like a little choked up because I just had me a little choked up too. Like, honestly, just thinking (laughs) about it. Yeah, because. Because, like, well, I went, I, I had this. Them, those moments. Like, oh, for sure. Low, like, I had this. It takes you to a place. In my last relationship. So yeah. it was very, very personal where um, we didn't date for very long. I think the, the all together was six months. Mm-hmm. But at a point he had gotten into a place where he was just not happy. Like, and he couldn't exactly explain it to me. He couldn't tell me what was going on. And I was trying to be supportive. I was like, listen, I will go with you to this. I would send him resources. I had all at one point gotten really scared that he was suicidal. Mm. And so I was like, if that's what you think, like, if you don't want to talk to me, here's a number. Like I had tried so many um, ways to like stay with him through this, but I couldn't, I realized that I was now hurting trying to help him. And at the time, all he really needed for the most part was to not have an obligation of a girlfriend. Mm. He couldn't handle the obligation of a relationship because he needed to be on his own. And so we mutually agreed that we just needed to go our separate ways. And we did. And nothing was crazy. We didn't fight or argue. It was sad. It was whatever. And a few weeks ago, he called me. I think it was two weeks ago. He called me and um, just to catch up, like he lost his grandfather recently. Mm. And so, you know, we had been in communication about that. And that was like his last super close family member that he lost. So it was a devastating loss. 
And um, we went to get off the phone and I was like, and like, he called me back and he's like, you know, I've been trying to say this to you for the last few conversations that I just want to apologize to you for how I handled our breakup yeah. that I couldn't tell you what I needed. God, I'm crying. <laughs> um, and he just I explained it. like it was a tough time and I yeah. couldn't handle being in a relationship. And I appreciate that you didn't like make me feel bad. I appreciate that you just respected the fact that it wasn't a good time. And I didn't even know that I needed that apology. Yeah. It, it freed me from what little bit of feelings I had that it was me. Because I did for a moment. You always do. You you At least you is should. Is there something better I could have yeah. done? Yeah. Did I miss something? Was it the distance? Was it the da-da-da-da-da? You always, you, at least you should, mm -hmm. try to evaluate what you contributed to a breakup. Yeah. But it gave me so much peace to hear him say, like, it really wasn't you. It was just not a good time for me. And I love you even still to this day. Like I'm appreciative of the time that we had together. I'm in such a better place today. And I just appreciate you being able to give me space to get back into my process of healing myself. And I was just like, when I got off the one, I thanked him for the apology and I told him it was no hard feelings. Like I respected him and I believe that he was really hurting. There were plenty of signs that showed me he was hurting. Um, but then I got off the phone and I like boo hoo, like I didn't even know I needed that. <laughs> like I, cause I didn't, I, yeah. had, I thought I had closure with the situation. So when I say apologize to the person, because he could be in turmoil, yeah. he could be in turmoil that he was doing everything right. He was trying super hard and yet, and still he it could, wasn't it, enough. it wasn't enough, you know? So he deserves the apology. Real lovers, God damn it, y'all got me crying today. <laughs> um, but yes, apologies go a really long way. It's not always, I don't think he apologized to me to get back together. He apologized to me because I deserved an apology. Yeah. Period. And I appreciate that so, so much. So shout out to him. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate that. No, nah, thank you for sharing that. Of course. You it, know, y'all know I'm going to be on to y'all the truth, even if it ain't always cute. It's an emotional <laughs> thing. Like I said, even for me, like as soon as you start talking about certain things that mm -hmm. even if it's not your relationship, it takes you to a point to where you did deal with something like that. Yeah. And then you start to like, it gets you like, you got, right, I need to leave this place right now. Like, <laughs> because I understand the emotion that comes with that for sure. Yeah. Um, and I do agree with you and we could end on that, that apologizing is so important. Mm -hmm. Um, mainly too, because your partner or the person that you're with just also wants to know that they were heard. Mm -hmm. you know and that yeah. that that you understand them mm -hmm. um i've had arguments with brie at times to where it's like just her saying i'm so sorry i did not mean to do that change the whole thing it's change like okay it. it's no problem it's okay babe like yeah. it's fine but if you try to die on the hill of i ain't wrong it's you then that makes it 10 times worse but if you just apologize and say mm -hmm. like i'm sorry mm -hmm. that wasn't my intention i didn't mean to do that this is what i meant i'll make sure next time to do this and x y and z that goes such a long way such a long way such and like a you said, long it way. helps people to understand like mm -hmm. okay it tells me number one you hear me mm -hmm. you care that yeah. you hurt me or something yeah. like that um and you're, you're acknowledging that all right there's something that maybe we need to work on mm -hmm. or something that needs to be changed or like you say it helps even deliver closure in certain situations to let me For know sure. like oh this thing that was heavy on my heart you lifted lifted something off of me to let me know like boom okay yeah it wasn't necessarily me like i feel i feel better about yes. that um yes. so to yes. know something is one thing to be validated and it is a, is another um and so yeah I, you you hit the nail on the head yeah so we're going in there yes well <laughs> anonymous thank you for writing in y'all thank, thank you for letting me cry um if you want to write in you know where to find us relationship restore.com click the contact and you can write into a real love scenario or for the girls um you can also follow me on social i'm at ronnie cakes at Ray Smith. and at relationship restore don't forget to leave a review share 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 yes. if you love this i promise you someone else will too we'll see you next time see you